on site live at the Mid-South Forestry Equipment Show up here just south of Starkville, Mississippi. And joining us now, Mississippi Senator Tyler McCon. He represents District 31. That includes Lauderdale, Newton, and Scott Counties. He's the vice chair of the Senate Agriculture Committee. Good morning there, Senator. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Gerard. So glad to be here. Yeah, man, this is incredible, isn't it? This thing, it, it's, uh, this is one of those industries I think a lot of us don't know about, maybe because it occurs in the woods and we don't know but this is unbelievable well that that's it and, and anybody that has any interest in forestry and wanting to know how these products end up from from the soil of, of great state of mississippi into your homes and building these uh these beautiful homes around the state should come out today and and pay their little money it's raining out there you can't do anything else you might as well come out here and <laughs> see them cut these trees down with this top-notch equipment well i tell anybody in ag and forestry we are no longer at a point where you take a chainsaw out there in the woods and, and, and you make a living off that. Yeah. Forestry and ag nowadays is a high-tech no high tech equipment out there. You've got to kind of know what you're doing. Um, everybody says, you know, the kids are out there doing video games. Well, the reality is when you get in some of this equipment, it is high-tech, <laughs> and, and, and playing video games is one thing that would help you out, I guess. <laughs> it is unbelievable. And so uh, I think gone are the days when the folks that work in this industry are, are just all all about their, their their physical talents and their their ability their ability to exert that physically to accomplish the task this is as much a mental endeavor as ever it's well, incredible you know anybody that's got their own business of course it's a mental endeavor because yeah. you're constantly trying to be sure at the end of the day that you can feed your family sure. and pay your workers but on top of that the, these um, this equipment is is not necessarily cheap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and working on that equipment is not an easy task either. So, uh, I, I, d I do agree with you. It's a mental endeavor out there where, where people are having to know exactly what they're doing because it wouldn't take much to, to mess something up out there. And, and, and I can remember my dad was, he would haul pup wood. Okay. Uh, back when I was young, he'd haul pup wood and, and they'd go out there and manhandle it, get it on there and take it to the mill. Uh, of course, nowadays, pup wood prices are a little, little, yeah. little deflated there. Yeah. We're not happy with that. But, um, but I think it's interesting out there to go around and see where we're at now as, a, as an industry. It's unbelievable. Well, I got a little uh, firsthand demonstration there of, of the processing and uh, from uh, cutting down the timber to uh, processing it and categorizing it and then ultimately finishing it in the chipper and so forth. It's just unbelievable. And that equipment is so impressive. But even more impressive, the crowds here are huge. Well, I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, I was talking to Tedrick with the uh, uh, Forest Association over here just a few moments ago, and, and I guess the one thing about it is a, a wet and rainy day is going to keep some folks out, <laughs> but the forestry folks have nothing else to do. They can't get in the woods. It's muddy. We can't get our timber out. So uh, let's go out there and see what the, what the industry has to offer now. So, uh, as we said, you serve as the vice chair of the Senate Agriculture Committee. Of course, it's no secret agriculture is is a, a a huge industry in our state and uh, the forestry industry the logging industry in particular is also quite large employs a lot of people produces a lot of the state's gdp i mean it's just a critical aspect of our economy well you know i believe it's averaging about a 13 billion dollar industry Gosh. in mississippi and about four percent of our workforce is employed out there uh it, it three billion in in wages being paid out on average Man. salary right now i'll tell you we're very fortunate in district 31 we've got um viewer lumber which came in there and built a, a state-of-the-art mill i mean the truth be known they sweep their own floors at night i mean it just <laughs> it, it just takes care of itself unbelievable but then you turn around and you've got places like tracks plus yeah uh, chris weems and his his industry's built up to be an amazing industry across the state they're doing a great job selling new and used uh, equipment out there so uh, you know, I can't I can't sit out here and say that forestry's not been beneficial to our district. Yeah, and it has been. Yeah. So, so it, yeah, it is an incredible industry, and and so much of it is based right here in Mississippi as well, which is very important. Th that's right, and and I, I think you're seeing a, a move, and 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 I'd, I'd have to get the data to tell you, but I've seen that there's some some data out there saying that the 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 western coast is selling off timber because of of the the fires and and yeah. the environmental dangers and coming down here to the southeast and buying up and if you look around i, I feel like that's a 
that's a true statement out there. If you look around in Mississippi, you know we can grow anything. Yeah. We can grow pine trees, we can grow corn, uh, but we are seeing people invest back in this area to continue to invest in the timber industry. That is fantastic, and it, it's my understanding just from chatting with some of the folks around here today, there are plenty of jobs available too. They need workers. Right now, we have jobs. If you can't find a job, you're not looking at yeah. this point. And, and I think that that's the biggest thing we've got to do. We've got to get folks back to work. If we get folks back to work, uh, we can see some of these prices maybe change a little bit. Uh, we can see some of this, may, this demand come down maybe on some of the plywood and things of that nature. Um, so if you're looking for a job, whether it be in timber, whether it be in sales of equipment, or whether it be a mechanic, we, we've got something out there for you to do. And good paying jobs, too. I mean, oh, my goodness. The, the, the market dynamics are at work, uh, shall we say, and the demand exceeds the supply, and that usually causes uh, wages to increase just to get people to, to, to come out and do these and fill these jobs, but it's uh, such a critical part. So, got to talk a little politics. What's uh, what's on your agenda with respect to the Agriculture Committee? Anything in particular that you're looking for, your members are looking for, the industry's looking for that you need to address in the next session? Well, you know, overall, I'd like to say that, that I don't come in there with an agenda. <laughs> I just go in there to try to meet whatever needs are well, out sure. there. And, yeah. and I've been very fortunate to, to go around uh, in the last uh, two months or so and talking to partners in the industry. Uh, I was fortunate to be on a Monday with uh, uh, the congressman from uh, Pennsylvania was down at a round table and, hmm. and all of the industry partners went around telling where their concerns are and what we, sh what we need to be doing to try to support them. Uh, you know, of course, ag, you know as well as I do that we've got a, a, a medical marijuana yeah. um, elephant in the room right now. Yep. Uh, I do, Good I way do, to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe that we've got a lot of folks working on that with Senator Blackwell, and I trust his, yeah. his leadership in that. I, I do believe that we're also going to see a growing aspect. So, of course, ag is sitting out there trying to be sure that whatever we do uh, is beneficial to our farmers here in the state of Mississippi. Yeah. You know, like I said, we can grow whatever. Um, I know that's a high-tech industry, so it's not just going to be uh, uh, somebody going out there with yeah. 10 acres and growing something. So uh, we're always going to be vigilant to that. Uh, I think cattlemen, uh, you know, I'm a cattleman myself. I, I haven't heard very much going on. We were very fortunate last year with a liability bill that, that came through the House and Senate and, uh, and assisted in making that a consistent yeah. threshold. Now, poultry right now, you're hearing some, some talk around the state with Sanderson selling. Um, unfortunately, we've seen poultry slip up a little bit, and it's always been our cheapest protein out there. We've got to continue to do what we can to, to support poultry. Uh, my my grandfather and father and and whole family. I grew up uh, un unfortunately in the chicken house a lot of the days with B.C. Rogers back then, yeah. and of course it's sold and been been combined with with other agencies and other uh, industries being like Cook Foods. Yeah. Um, so we've got to continue to look out for the best interest of our state. There's one thing about it: Mississippi feeds the world. We yeah. don't just feed. Uh, our local folks. It's incredible. And, and of course, Scott County uh, being part of your Senate district, uh, lots of poultry there, obviously. That's and, right. And uh, it, if, if I'm not mistaken, Senator, is that the number one agricultural industry as a category? Well, it's poultry in 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 Scott County it is, uh, but you always have Scott and uh, and it's either uh, Simpson or Covington that kind of okay. trade in and out on their numbers yeah. on who's the number one in the state right now. Yeah. Uh, but at one point, you know, you had Scott County and Morton and Forest. You, you couldn't look up without seeing a, a, a plan of some sort that was in the poultry industry there. Lots of employees, uh, and and I got to tell you, in the IT business, they were my customers. So they, you know, they were, uh, they they drove the economy to a great extent. That's uh, right. Uh, uh, lots of folks benefited from that. So, uh, my understanding from my good friend Representative Lee Yancey over there on the House side, who's working with Senator Blackwell on the medical marijuana bill, he he tells us that uh, they're fairly close to getting something done here. What do you think? What are you hearing, if anything, that you share? I don't hear much. <laughs> good to you. And you know, I I, I trust that uh, as they continue to work on it, that before the governor calls a special session, that there will be some, uh, we'll be fairly close and we won't have an extended special session. Uh, I don't think it's beneficial for the state of Mississippi or the taxpayers yeah. to sit over there for two or three weeks uh, twiddling our thumbs and spending their money. So if we if we come in, I hope the governors uh, and the lieutenant governor and speaker all come together and come to some uh, some type of close agreement 
and we can get that done and out of there pretty quick. It seems like that's uh, sort of imminent at this point, I, just from what I can tell. I, and I agree with the governor. Let's don't call a special session unless we know we got the votes counted we get something done. Otherwise, we're just spinning our will on the taxpayer's dime. So appreciate your position on that as well. Senator, uh, pleasure having you on today. It's going to be a good show. So glad to be here, Gerard. You, you got it. We'll be right back here with Midday. Stay